Hi, it's Melissa with Greenopolis TV. I am in the Sensible City Lab here at MIT, Boston, Massachusetts. Got a lot of fun things going on around here. Let's go find out what this is all about. Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> so I'm Jennifer. I'm a research assistant here at Sensible City Lab. Also an architecture student in um, of the department here. Well, this is fascinating. So you have a program that you've been working on called Trash Track. Could you explain a little bit about the name. I mean, I think that it kind of makes sense about what you're kind of doing, but where was this inspired from? So the project actually started with um, an exhibition in New York um, by the Architectural League called Toward the Sentient City. And uh, we kind of did a workshop and we started brainstorming different ways of um, different ideas about what we could track in the city and what would show us more about infrastructures within the city. And one of the um, items that came up was trash. Um, we know so much about the um, supply chain, how things come together, um, and what we don't know very much about the waste removal system. So um, Trash Track is basically a project where we take tiny little tags and we attach them to trash and then we throw them away and we follow where they go through the city. And what, what are you finding? Uh, at this point we're actually um, going through the system of actually tagging items. So we have um, working with a group here called the uh, End of Life Group. They do life cycle analysis and they've assembled a list of different trash objects that um, we think would be interesting to actually follow. And we're going through and shagging different things from refrigerators, appliances, all the way to coffee cups and recyclables. And so at this point, we're um, in the process of just collecting the data and then um, going through a visualization where we show uh, where it begins. And then as it moves through the city, how long it stays in different places. And essentially following it all the way to either a landfill, a recycling facility, um, and whether or not it goes overseas. So the, the tracking device itself is very, very high tech because it can't get what it has to be able to stay on. Could you show us, do you have any examples of that? Sure, so this is our tag, and essentially it's just a little bitty cell phone. It works with SMS text messaging, so um, every five minutes it sends a text message to the server here at MIT, and through cell phone triangulation we're actually able to locate exactly where it is. So one of the big problems that came up is that um, this tag is a little vulnerable, especially in the waste removal system, so we came up with different strategies of how to protect the tag. Um, a couple of the earlier ideas we had were um, we used epoxy and foam and rubber and the thing that we found worked the best was actually foam because one of the problems that we have is that all the different um, items of trash have different consistencies, different sizes, so foam is actually really great because it starts out as a liquid and it can fill any kind of um, trash object. So here's an example of different ways we've covered the trash. This is so rubber. Foam around the bar? Right. So first we um, shrink wrap it to protect the electronics, and then we put it into um, a cup or a little plastic tray, and then we pour our foam in and expands around it, makes it crush proof and makes it waterproof. Or what cities have you done this in? So we're partnering up with um, a few different people. Architectural League was our first partner, and then Seattle Waste Management actually came on board. So we've really been doing uh, the majority of our deploying in Seattle, but we've also done a few in New York and then also London. Um, but in New York at this point, I think we've put about 600 tags out there. So we did a first deployment at the beginning of the summer with about 60 tags just to test the system, um, start working with different volunteers and see the different areas of Seattle. We've located where all the recycling facilities would be. So um, and we wanted to test different things. So we wanted to see what happens if you put a regular piece of trash in the recycling. How does it get filtered out? What happens if you put a recyclable in the trash? Does it make its way to a recycling facility? Um, so we did kind of a pre uh, preliminary analysis of that, and then we went back and we worked with volunteers, and we actually tagged about 400 things. A second. Could you tell us a little bit more about your partnership with Waste Management? I know that they're very interested in understanding this process a little bit better and more, so how do they come how, into play? So, like I said, it initially started with the Architectural League, starting um, asking for a uh, call for proposals. And then once we had the idea for the project, we realized that we really wanted to be able to focus on different cities. Um, and so we approached Seattle Waste Management uh, to become a partner, and we're really excited that they were equally excited and wanted to come on board. Um, it's also quite you know, interesting that they're willing to just kind of open up um, their facilities to us to really um, explore this kind of data. So um, they came on as a partner, and also recently we were looking at another version of our tags, and so Qualcomm um, has actually come on board to possibly help manufacture our tags with us. 